So I wanted to do another um, entry on, on record collection or collecting recordings, I suppose, in the more general sense of, of recordings rather than records. Um, and uh, the first time I did this, I had someone, at least in my perception, get a little upset with me because I didn't, he felt I didn't know what I was talking about. And, and um, what I was thinking is that in certain cases I don't. And that's why when I responded to the guy, I was polite about it because I really had made some mistakes. And and honestly, um, I've said this before, but the this particular vlog and the blog will be more intelligent if people say, hey, you know, that didn't happen. You're making it up, you whatever. And I, you know, I am open to that. Um, it's not my favorite thing to, to get uh, to get, uh, you know, sort of, <laughs> you know, to, to get corrected. Nobody loves it, but, um, I certainly, um, I certainly will accept criticism. So for, the, for what it's worth, and I'm not an expert on high fidelity. I don't think I was trying to claim to be that. I, I just, uh, I'm trying, or I should, I'm working on at this, at this vlog on only talking about things I've done. And I, don't have the money for uh, a tuned room and you know th you know a fifty thousand dollar hi-fi setup and you know shelves worth of vinyl and and all this stuff that you know eleven thousand dollar turntables I've seen some stuff about that on some of the videos on YouTube now you know things that I just don't have the money for I, I just don't uh, what I would like to buy I'm buy about I'm gonna buy a turntable that's roughly $500, $600, and buy a pair of active uh, bookshelf speakers. Uh, I'm trying to decide how I'm gonna place the bookshelf speakers because my room is pretty awkward. Um, it's not the best room for for a pair of speakers. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. Um, and then I'm gonna buy a uh, compatible preamp for the uh, turntable because the, pre the, the turntable I'm looking at doesn't have a preamp on it and my understanding is that it's really pretty much necessary I'm, I'm gonna have to talk to somebody about this maybe but it's my understanding is it's pretty much necessary that you have the turntable the preamp and then the active speakers that you need all three so that's what I'm working on getting into my life here it's my it's what I'm saving my money for right now uh, uh, the other reason I'm doing this is that um, Record store day is going to be April 13th, so I thought it would be, I went out and bought some stuff early because I'm not going to be able to get there uh, on that day, and so I bought uh, I bought uh, a John Schofield Joe Lovano record called Time On My Hands, I bought a copy of Blue Train, which is a nice, uh, by Col John Coltrane, which is a nice reissue, I bought some cheap classical vinyl, uh, classical music vinyl, which was pretty fun. Um, so just some stuff like that. I, I had a good time with it. And uh, I guess the other thing to talk about, I mean, we could talk about uh, is my old CD collection. I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, let me fix this tripod here. Yeah. So um, so the, the, uh, the CD collection I had was about 300 CDs at the time. Uh, I started collecting it in high school, or even even as early as, yeah, probably right around freshman year of high school, I guess. And I would buy books, or get books, because I was a bookish kid, and I would, it would be like Penguin's Guide to Classical Music Recordings, or it would be a comparable book on jazz, or it would be like The Rolling Stone, uh, The Rolling Stone 100 Best uh, uh, Records of All Time, Rock and Roll Records of All Time. And I would look through all of these. I would look through all these books, and then I would go pick out recordings. So I had everything. I had jazz and classical, a real eclectic mix, world music, uh, avant-garde, rock, pop. You know, I had everything. I had everything from Led Zeppelin to, to uh, you know, I'm trying to think of one of the some of the hip hop I had was was pretty interesting. And I just really got sick and tired of having it in my house and it was wasting a lot of space. It was just, I, I, I don't have a lot of extra space. I wanted to put bookshelves in. I wasn't gonna have space for it. 
and I just got rid of everything. I had like 15 or 20 CDs now. I did another cleaning out of the house recently. I got rid of six boxes of books and four bags of trash out of a very small apartment, which just goes to show how you can hoard stuff, how anybody can do it. I'm not even the worst defender on this one. I'm certainly not perfect, but I, I'm not somebody who just like hoards huge quantities of materials, but I had so many books. I mean, I just, when I went into storage, I was like, oh, I can't even believe it. So I got rid of a lot and wound up, you know, with, with, with a couple hundred dollars worth of, um, of, um, of money back, uh, from, from selling it. And then, you know, had some fun with that. I'm trying, another thing I'm trying not to do, I think I may have mentioned this before, is that now that I've cleaned this out, I'm trying not to add more stuff. Just bu go buy more now that I've cleaned out space. You know, now now I'm gonna put even more, now I'm just gonna refill the space back up. I'm trying not to do that. Um, so, um, but yeah, the, uh, so, you know, I, I have, I got rid of some CDs, I got about 15 or 20, and the CDs I kept are things that I can't really get anywhere else. Um, I don't really intend to going back to CDs. I, I don't, I've, I've gotten to the point where I just really don't like the format that much. Um, I like vinyl, I like some of the higher resolution um, digital files, uh, DVD audio is really good, uh, SACDs, which are so rare, I don't even, most players don't even play them, or the ones that I know of don't, um, so a lot of players didn't play them in the past at least, and, uh, and, um, I don't know, it's just, and then there's the convenience of being able to turn on, like, Spotify Free or Apple Music and just punch a button and just like, you know, listen to it. And those, those, I mean, I, I have a pretty good, one of the things is that I may not know, you know, I may not be like, you know, listening to a tuned, to a, to tuned speakers and da da da, but I'm a musician, I have a good ear. And to my ear, like when I listen to Spotify free, like, the, the quality of the of the files that you're streaming is very low and uh, on Apple Music I notice the difference in in terms of quality I do use Apple Music I'm a bit of a hypocrite um, because I, I use my Apple Music a lot and I would say that I can hear the difference even from CD to Apple Music which you know the difference between an mp4 streaming an mp4 and listening to a cd and cds aren't the best sound in the world i can tell that even sometimes um i don't you know i i think you know we there there's always a lot of cause there's a lot of controversy i think that you know really thinking about i mean there's there's a lot of controversy right now about about these different changes that are being made in in formats and uh, and and the way that music is sold, you know, I, I've made a lot of jokes about it. I was talking to somebody and <laughs> we were having a, a bit of fun about it. And uh, one of the uh, one of the things that I really really like is the Motown box set. And the original Motown box set, which was the one I'm talking about, was every single that that Motown ever released. And it was on CD, I think, is the one I was thinking of. And it was like 150 bucks. It was expensive. And it was at least 150 bucks. And, uh, and that was, you know, but like back in like the 2000s or like the late 90s, it was expensive. And I'm not even sure they sell it new anymore. Or maybe it's been replaced by another product that's similar or whatever. But um, you can get the majority of the Motown box set on, on a paid streaming service now, almost all, all the singles included in the set, and it's a big set. And I was saying, you know, well, don't tell anyone I told you because, you know, somebody will come and, you know, like kill me, for, you know, because like these people are, are, people are getting really upset about the, about the, about the economy of this stuff. Um, 
So we were joking around about that, you know, someone was going to come and break down my door because I was advising people to, 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 to check into uh, box set material. Another one is um, I've mentioned a few times is the 60s, uh, 60s, I, th I think the name, 60s Nuggets is always what I think of, but I think it's actually the full name of the box set is 60s Psychedelic Nuggets. And for those who like Garage Rock, which is kind of a small group of people, but um, the 60s Nuggets, the 60s Nuggets uh, box set is one of the best box sets of all time. And it's not, probably not going to be all that easy to find out although i don't know again they they reissue stuff so it, it you know it's definitely worth looking into um but you can get most of that music now on on free services and if it's not on a free service it's on a paid service and um and that's you know those both those two box sets are really really something i'd like to see on on vinyl um i don't know i think they may you know, like if you if you if you could have like reissued forty fives of Motown signal singles, that would be cool. Um, and they may do stuff like that. I have to do some more research, um, and uh, that would be cool. Like same thing with the Nuggets box set. Do like singles with B sides or something. I mean, that would be really cool. That'd be a really fun thing to have. Uh, actually, <laughs> speaking of forty fives, as I finish this up. My 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 grandfather passed away. I, I I haven't talked about this that much. My grandfather passed away last year. He was a hundred, almost a hundred and one. He was a hundred years old in nine months when he passed away. And um, we've been cleaning out his house, which has been a huge job. And they sent over some stuff, some 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 vinyl, and uh, some of it was his old forty fives. So I got rid of most of the vinyl. It was like stuff that. I mean, I'm not going to play that stuff. Henry Mancini, you know, like the Mary Poppins soundtrack. I mean, stuff that I'm just not going to listen to. And, but there was a crate, little little red box of 45s. So I bought some 45 slip covers and um, some inner and outer sleeves. And one of my projects for the next week or whatever in between doing other stuff like school and stuff is going to be to uh, to uh, clean those 45s up and put them in sleeves. There's a couple things that aren't salvageable for sure. Some of them are just scuffed that probably would play pretty well. So they probably would they putting a even just doing like a simple surface cleaner or whatever would make a big difference on most of them. And that would be nice. And so you know I mean, it's kind of cool. There's some Elvis Presley 45s in there. There's a lot of stuff, which is like that light swing type stuff. Um, there's a do there's a doobie song. I don't know if you people don't seem to know about doobies and don't bees. I've tried to explain what that was. Doobies and don't bees. Uh, this is not even my generation. This is my parents' generation, or maybe before, uh, where if you were a doobie as a kid, that meant doobie like that kid. And then if you were a don't be, it meant don't be like that kid because, you know, the doobie kids were the good kids and the don't be kids were the bad kids. So this was the doobie song, right? And um, the the re that record I would never put on a turntable. It's like Fisher Price. Like, like it's it's no good. It's terrible. But I, it's kind of funny to look at. Like, you got to charge out of checking it out. So <laughs> that's kind of the stuff I've been doing um, my vinyl collection is still really small. I've got 15 of them or something. Uh, I, uh, I really enjoy the format. Um, and I am, I'm going to have to go. I, uh, I can go a little over, I guess, and just say that, uh, I do want to, um, mention to people that, um, uh, you know, it's just, you know, I, I don't expect to move mountains with this particular vlog, but that, it, you know, I, I would like to think I could attract some more more people to this thing. And so if, if you know, if, if you're getting something out of it, let me know, you know, or if you're not, let me know. That would be good. 